Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about essentially, you know, what I make of Alpha Investments investment advice. Uh, the main takeaway, and I should have, you know, he's been pretty spot on. Uh, I think Alpha Investments has more experience in this field than I have. I've only owned the game store for a year, a year and a few months now. And when you own a game store, you typically see different things. So the reason that I knew Revise was going to spike was at some point in time when I used to get lots of Revise cards coming to my store, I no longer got them. In fact, let me pull you a list of like the junk I get now. I get uh, Moral, Furry of Akram, Laboratory Maniac, Ultimate Edition, Surveys, Stampede, Conspiracy Take the Crown, Font of Mythos, Conflux, Rivals of Ixlon, Tender Shoot, Dryad, Stunt Double, and these are the most expensive cards. So in terms of you know how valuable these cards are, they're not valuable. Uh, event Deck, Magic Modern Event Deck card, Journey into Nyx, uh, Robin Call Allegiance, uh, Vault of Champions. Um, these are the cards I get very often. Oblivion Stone used to be really, really expensive from Commander's Anthology Volume 2 English. I mean, these are... I, I could not kid you. I cannot kid you the type of crap that comes into my store nowadays or comes that they want me to buy. I just don't have any interest in it. Um, I get offered to buy Standard and Modern a lot. I bought a lot of Standard and Modern because I thought that it would be investable, which was bad on me. And had I taken... So Rudy Star Method, where he's the only employee, he uses his store more as a warehouse. There's no events. There's no pre-releases. And he has the store because the distributors, even though not all of them require you to have a store, they just require you to have a, a sales, a tax sales license or something. In the state of Texas, that's all they really require you. They appreciate you have a store and ordering from them, you know, they can make the difference between residential and the store. Now, when you're buying magic cards, having a store is very powerful. And I've said this before. When, when these stores go to a GP, they're not looking to sell, they're not looking to sell magic cards. They're not paying five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars for a magic fest vendor space so they can sell you magic cards. They're looking to buy magic cards because they know at these events a lot of people you know they go there just like I do and they take their whole collection or whatever they want to sell and they sell it and then they can stock. That is why Card Kingdom right now is out of revised cards totally. Not just dual lands, they're out of everything. They're out of Savannah Lions, for goodness sake, and revised. So let's just kind of um, take it kind of slow and realize what is happening uh, with revised and why this is so important in, for the long term of Magic the Gathering. These cards are not being reprinted anymore. These are the only things that are safe from Wizard of the Coast. And it is, you know, if you enjoy playing Magic and you enjoy a uh, more, it sounds like I'm advertising retirement home, but, you know, a simpler time. You know, a simpler time in Magic where you don't have MPL, you don't have, you know, a lot of things that I think I look at and I say, you know what, I, I don't want any part of this. This is not for me. I'm going to pass. Um, Kaldenheim was like that, is like that for me. It's uh, not something that I, I look at the set and I say, uh, eh. <laughs> you know, I'm not into it and maybe you're into it and that's great for you. But I'm personally not really into it because, hey, you know, it's not for me. Um, the other thing that I would like to say about um, what's going on in Magic the Gathering. Is it hype? Is it not hype? Is it something where people are... Now, what, why are the prices so high? And the prices are so high in my... So in my opinion, prices are really, really high because you're never going to see these cards again. Um, you're just simply never going to see these cards again. And I wish that you could see them. I wish that, you know, you would, but you're just not going to. Um, it's just not happening. And the reason it won't happen is 
for the same reason that these cards are not coming in my store, simply the people who wanted to sell them, they've already sold them. There is no additional amount of people who are like, oh, you know, let's sell. No, all those people are gone. Like, there's no one left. So, like, you have to understand, there's no one left with these collections that wants to sell. And it's super obvious if you own a store. If you if you get the collections and they come in and they continue to come in and they continue to come in and it's the same collections time and time again, and then suddenly, all of a sudden, like no more revised cards are coming out and you can see that the drop-off is pretty significant, you're going to think to yourself, oh, why is there such a significant drop-off? Why are people not coming in and sell me their revised? Why are they not selling dual lands anymore? I mean, duh. Like, it's like Omega duh, right? Because they're just not those collections. You know, they've already sold everything to Rudy. And Rudy's not going to re-put in the market. So what I'm saying is a lot of these people are very foolish. They're selling revised and eventually they're never going to be able to rebuy back in. And I tell you my story because it's not great. This doesn't put, paint me as an MTG finance genius. Because if I had followed Alpha Investments logic, I would have just never sold my dual lands. I just continue to buy them and I would have bought more. I bought... $21,500 $21, of dual lands and right before COVID-19 and a lot of these dual lands underground sea I paid $200 for and some of most of them were near mint some of them you know were played I mean again there are conditional variants and one of the things was I just bought them all it was a all nothing deal I remember uh, volcanic was 195 so I should have picked up more underground seas I could have bought a lot more I could have bought eight times as much at that current price but you know hey COVID-19 is happening is it a really good idea to buy magic cards at the time you know when you don't really know what's the uh, atmosphere and, and the answer would be yes if if Rudy had that deal he would have ate the whole deal up um, it was probably a two million dollar deal and I'm not going to go into too much details about what happened with it and again the guy sold on eBay and yeah, it was uh, very fascinating. It was something where I regret the choices I made and not going much, much deeper. Now, again, financially at that time, I wasn't as wealthy as I am today. But had I listened to the Rudy logic of buy, reserve, list, and never sell, I wouldn't have sold half my dual lands. And I bought another collection after. I wouldn't have sold half my dual lands for 250 dollars for an underground sea i would have kept them all but i wanted to i didn't break even i wanted to come close to breaking even that way it's kind of like and that's what i typically do i buy a collection i try to flip it to make enough money that i feel like it's like a safe investment if you will that it's not a twenty one thousand dollar buy it's now a ten thousand dollar buy or a five thousand dollar buy which i feel more comfortable at and what I've learned is just gamble on it. Just roll the dice. And I, get, I, get, I made the same mistake again because there was a collection that had Power 9 and had Arabian Nights and had all these amazing cards. And all they really wanted was, uh, I think they wanted $9,000. And no, I, I offered nine. They wanted eleven. They weren't willing to make me in the middle. I wish I had that collection today. Uh, I wish I bought more. I, I've never not wished I could buy more. I've always wished I could buy more. Anyway, bye guys.